Chapter 2 The Importance of Works for Salvation Introduction The works of man are either good or evil. Evil works lead a person to perdition and makes him lose his salvation, but good works are necessary for salvation. And absence of good works shows that the faith is dead and fruitless. However, good works alone are not sufficient for salvation without faith baptism, and without the deserts of the blood of Christ. Good works are the fruit of faith. They demonstrate faith and perfect it as we shall see in detail here and after. God required and even commanded us to do good works, setting up punishments to be inflicted upon whomever neglects them. Condemnation on the day of judgment will be according to one's works. But we say that salvation is not attained through good works yet it is not attained without them. 4. Salvation cannot be attained except through the blood of Christ, but works make one worthy of the deserts of his blood. Here we must draw your attention to something very important, which is that a person needs the help of grace to be able to do good works as the Lord Christ, glory be to him, says. Without me, you can do nothing. John chapter 15 verse 5. Our good works then are the outcome of the communion between our will and the work of the Holy Spirit within us. The texts of the Holy Bible which belittle the value of works either mean the works of the law, such as circumcision, ritual practices, observing days, months, and feasts, and other similar matters, or they are attacking the works which are not based on the blood of Christ and his redemption, such as the works of non-believers, of heathen, and so on. Such works are without faith or preceding faith. I shall try to deal with each of these topics separately as far as God's grace gives help. Evil works lead to perdition. It is a matter of course that evil works to lead to perdition. For God is perfect in his mercy as he is perfect in his justice. And as the wages of sin is death, Romans 6.23, so a sinner must be punished for his sin. It is true that Christ died for us, but only the penitent would enjoy the deserts of the death of Christ. Otherwise, such free salvation would be an open door for recklessness and corruption, or would be a permission for sinning without fear of the punishment, depending on the blood of Christ and the atonement which paid for everything. In this respect, St. Paul the Apostle says, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. How shall we who die to sin live any longer in it? Therefore, do not let sin reign in your immortal body, that you should obey it in its lusts. Romans chapter 6, verses 1 through 2. St. Paul goes on saying, What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? Certainly not. Do you not know that to whom you present yourselves slaves to obey, you are that one slave whom you obey, whether of sin to death, or of obedience to righteousness. Romans chapter 6, verses 15 and 16. In these two verses, the apostle shows us that if we obey sin, though being under grace, this obedience will lead us to death. And if so, this means that we lose the eternal life which we have in Christ Jesus. How great the importance is of these verses, especially because they are the words of inspiration on the mouth of St. Paul the Apostle, upon whom the Protestants depend mostly regarding the topic of grace and justification through faith. These verses are part of the Epistle to the Romans, the main epistle they depend on in this concern. See also Galatians chapter 2 verse 17. Texts from the Pauline Epistles Many are the texts of the Holy Bible that prove the fact that evil works lead to perdition. The following are some examples. Galatians 5, 19-21 Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, 
selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Faith, then, accompanied by such evil works, avails nothing and cannot save a person alone. Ephesians 5, 5-6 for this you know, that no fornicator, unclean person, nor covetous man is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 and 10 Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 4 But fornicators and adulterers God will judge. In these explicit verses, St. Paul the Apostle mentions over twenty evils that close the gate of the kingdom of God before any believer who may sin. Listen also to the very harsh words of St. Paul the Apostle of grace and justification in his epistle to the Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 26 verse 27 verses 29 through 31. For if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful expectation of judgment, and fiery indignation which will devour the adversaries. Of how much worse punishment do you suppose will he be thought worthy who has trampled the Son of God underfoot, counted the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified a common thing, and insulted the Spirit of grace? For we know him who said, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord, and again, the Lord will judge his people, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. The same meaning of the first two verses is asserted by the Apostle in another part of the epistle, Hebrews chapter 6, verses 4 through 8, in harsh, similar words. Romans chapter 1, verse 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men. Colossians chapter 3 verses 5 and 6. And therefore, put to death your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience. 2 Thessalonians 1, 8-9. through 9. Taking vengeance on those who do not know God, and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, and these shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord. We notice here that the everlasting destruction is set up as a punishment for both matters, abandoning faith and forsaking works. The words, do not know God, refer to lack of faith, while the words, do not obey the gospel, refer to forsaking works. Romans chapter 2 verses 8 through 10. But to those who are self-seeking and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation and wrath, tribulation and anguish, on every soul of man who does evil, of the Jew first and also the Greek, but glory, honor, and peace to everyone who works what is good, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. We notice here that not only the punishment of evil works is mentioned, but also the reward of good works comment. These verses quoted above show the punishment of sin, how a believer may perish if he sins, how evil works prevent a sinner from inheriting the kingdom of God, how God's wrath fall on him, and how he becomes among the sons of disobedience, how he is subject to fearful judgment and fiery indignation which may devour him, how such a sinner will be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord, and how tribulation and anguish will be on his soul, and how God will judge him. All this has been mentioned by St. Paul the Apostle, who talked in great details about the grace and justification through faith.
We started with these verses so that, in their light, we may understand the verses that dealt with grace and faith, which St. Paul himself mentioned. Thus, no one may ever think that St. Paul the Apostle taught different doctrines, for in almost every epistle he taught that sins close the gates of the kingdom of heavens. He even taught that evil works do away with faith. He said in his epistle to Titus, Titus chapter 1, verse 16, They profess to know God, but in works they deny him, being abominable, disobedient, and disqualified for every good work. Other texts from non-Pauline epistles. 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 4 through 22. For if God did not spare the angels who sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness, to be reserved for judgment, and did not spare the ancient world, then the Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptations, and to reserve the unjust under punishment for the day of judgment. And especially those who walk according to the flesh in the lust of uncleanness, and will utterly perish on their own corruption and will receive the wages of unrighteousness, to whom the gloom of darkness is reserved forever. For if, after they escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and overcome, the latter end is worse for them than the beginning. For it would have been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than having known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered to them. But. It has happened to them according to the true proverb. A dog returns to his own vomit, and a sow having washed to her wallowing in the mire. 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 17-18 through 18. What will be the end of those who do not obey the gospel of God? Now, if the righteous one is scarcely saved, where will the ungodly and the sinner appear? Acts chapter 5 verses 9 through 10. Then Peter said to her, How is it that you have agreed together to test the Spirit of the Lord? Look, the feet of those who have buried your husband are at the door, and they will carry you out. And the young men came in and found her dead, and carrying her out, buried her by her husband. The perdition of Ananias and Sapphira proves that evil work leads to destruction, and faith alone is not sufficient. Both of them were believers, but their hearts were not upright, so they perished. And the Bible states that after their death, great fear came upon all the church and upon all who heard these things. Revelations chapter 1 verse 8 but the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Revelations chapter 18 verse 7 In the measure that she glorified herself and lived luxuriously, in the same manner give her torment and sorrow. 1 John chapter 3, verse 15. Whoever hates his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. James 3, 1 and 2. My brethren, let not many of you become teachers, knowing that we shall receive a stricter judgment, for we all stumble in many things. James chapter 5, verses 1 and 9. Come now, you rich. Weep and howl for your miseries that are coming upon you. Do not grumble against one another, brethren, lest you be condemned. Behold, the judge is standing at the door. Comment. We see from the previous texts that many sins lead to perdition and to the lake which burns with fire and brimstone. Such sins bring about torment and sorrow, deprive sinners of eternal life, and cause misery and condemnation, whether they are serious sins or slight as some may deem them, such as teaching excessive riches, oppressing the hired or hating one's brethren, etc. This is also the teaching of the Lord Jesus Christ himself. John chapter 5 verses 28 and 29. For the hour is coming in which all who are in the graves will hear his voice and come forth, those who have done good to the resurrection of life, and those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. Matthew 
chapter 13, verses 40 through 42. Therefore, as the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of this age. The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and those who practice lawlessness, and will cast them into the furnace of fire. There will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Matthew chapter 7 verses 19 and 20. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits you will know them. In all the previous texts, we notice that the Lord Jesus Christ did not say that the non-believers will be cast into fire or condemnation, but those who have done evil. All things that offend and those who practice lawlessness and those who do not bear good fruit. The following texts indicate clearly that faith alone is of no avail for salvation unless accompanied by good works. Matthew chapter 7 verses 21 through 23. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you, depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. We notice here that those who were to perish were not merely believers, but they were also endowed with gifts and worked miracles. Matthew chapter 25 verses 41 through 46. Then he will also say to those on the left hand, Depart from me, you cursed, into the everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you did not take me in. Naked, and you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. And then they also will answer him, saying, Lord, when? And these will go away into everlasting punishment but the righteous into eternal life. We notice here likewise that those who were to perish were not murderers, fornicators, or idolaters, but the cause of their perdition was merely their not giving food to the hungered, nor visiting the sick. Luke chapter 13 verses 3 and 5 Unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Matthew chapter 5 verses 29 and 30. And if your right eye causes you to sin, pluck it out and cast it from you. For it is more profitable for you that one of your members perish than for your whole body to be cast into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin. Here, the lack of faith is not the cause for casting into hell, but just one sin of the flesh, such as the lust of the eyes, which lead to adultery or to theft, for example. Luke chapter 13 verses 24 through 28. Strive to enter through the narrow gate. For many, I say to you, seek to enter and will not be able. When once the master of the house has risen up and shut the door, and you begin to stand outside and knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open for us. And he will answer and say to you, I do not know you, where you are from. Depart from me, all you workers of iniquity. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Lord here is addressing believers who say to him, Lord, Lord. However, they were to perish because they were workers of iniquity. Matthew chapter 19, verse 24. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. This shows that some people may lose the kingdom not because they did not believe, but because of the dangers of wealth. Matthew chapter 29 verse 36 But I say to you that for every idle word men may speak, they will give an account of it in the day of judgment. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. One's faith does not protect one against falling under condemnation due to one's words. This reminds us of the words of St. Basil the Great, who said, What would it benefit me if I did all righteousness, but said to my brother, You fool, for then I would be in danger of hellfire, as our Lord Jesus Christ said. But whoever says, You fool, shall be in danger of hellfire. Judgment 
according to works. It is an obvious fact which shows the importance of works. In the Old Testament, David the psalmist says, Also to you, O Lord, belongs mercy, for you render to each according to his work. Psalm chapter 62, verse 12. And in the Ecclesiastes, it is stated, For God brings every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether it is good or whether it is evil. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 14. In the New Testament, this fact is asserted by the Lord Jesus Christ and by his holy disciples. The Lord says, For the Son of Man will come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he will reward each according to his works. Matthew chapter 16, verse 27. He says also, For the Lord is coming, in which all who are in the graves will hear his voice, and come forth those who have done good to the resurrection of life, and those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. John chapter 5, verses 28 through 29. Notice that he is speaking in this verse about works, those who have done good, those who have done evil. Condemnation is not for works only, but even for words, as the Lord says, for by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. Matthew chapter 12, verse 36. This is obvious also in the revelation as the Lord sent to each of the seven angels of the churches, saying, I know your works, Revelations chapter 2, verse 2. He also says expressly, And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me, to give to everyone according to his work, Revelations chapter 22, verse 12. It is also said in the same book, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works follow them. Revelations chapter 14 verse 13. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. Revelations chapter 20 verse 12. The picture of judgment which the Lord revealed to us by his words to those on his right hand and the others on his left, is judgment according to works. For he said to those on his right hand, I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. And because of such good works, he said to them, Come, you blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 through 46. He did the same likewise concerning the evildoers. He judged them according to their works. A person then is apt to lose the kingdom if only his heart becomes void of mercy and he does not give food to the hungry nor visit the sick. Whatever mercy he may have and whatever vain confidence may fill his heart would avail him nothing. How hard are the words of St. James the Apostle in this regard. He says, what does it profit, my brethren, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can faith save him? James chapter 2 verse 14 Judgment according to works is also a fact very frequently referred to by St. Paul the Apostle. He says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body, according to what he has done, whether good or bad. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10, and also, But in accordance with your hardness and your impenitent heart, you are treasuring up for yourself wrath in the day of wrath, and revelation of the righteous judgment of God, who will render to each one according to his deeds. Romans chapter 2, verses 5 through 7. About the same topic, St. Paul the Apostle says, Whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. Galatians chapter 6 verses 7 through 8. He says also, Each one's work will become manifest, for the day will declare it, because it will be revealed by fire, and the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 13. He says that everyone will have his reward according to his labor, not according to his faith or according to the work of grace. 
St. Peter the Apostle, also speaking about judgment according to works, says, The Father who, without partiality, judges, according to each one's work, conduct yourselves throughout the time of your sojourning here in fear. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 17 Since works, whether good or evil, are so serious as to cause one's condemnation, would anyone dare belittle their value of importance? My beloved brethren, since God does not forget a cup of cold water, and the reward is not lost, nor forget at all the labor of love, therefore be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58 Works are very important for our salvation and for determining our eternal destiny. Let us then contemplate on their necessity. Works are fruits requisite for faith. Works are fruits of faith, for living faith must bear fruit, and its fruit is good. Such works prove the existence of faith and its liveliness. They are also fruit of the work of the Holy Spirit within us, and are requisite for the life of repentance which we lead. Does God require such works or such fruit? Yes, he does, and he emphasizes that. John the Baptist stood crying out to the multitudes, Bear fruits worthy of repentance, and do not begin to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. Luke chapter 3 verse 8. He wanted to say, You're being chosen by God does not mean that you can be saved without works. You must bear fruits worthy of repentance. But if we do not, in this case you will perish. What is the evidence? John the Baptist, who among those born of women, there has not risen one greater than he, goes on to say, And even now the axe is laid to the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Luke chapter 3 verse 9. It means that whoever does no good works will perish. You may argue, saying, I have Abraham as my father, I am born of God, I have been justified, sanctified, and regenerated. Well, but I say to you, bear fruits worthy of repentance. This is not said by John the Baptist alone, but in the New Testament, St. Paul the Apostle also says, But declare it first to those in Damascus and in Jerusalem, and throughout all the regions of Judea, and then to the Gentiles, that they should repent, turn to God, and do works befitting repentance. Acts chapter 26 verse 20. And in the epistle to Titus, St. Paul says, This is a faithful saying, and these things I want you to affirm constantly, that those who have believed in God should be careful to maintain good works. Why do you say this, you great saint? He proceeds to say, and let our people also learn to maintain good works, that they may not be unfruitful. Titus chapter 3 verses 8 and 14. Works then are the fruits of faith. If you do have faith, but your faith does not bear fruit, it is then dead faith. For had it been living faith, it would have brought forth fruit. The issue is expounded by our master James the Apostle. He says, what does it profit, my brethren, if someone says he has faith, but does not have works? Can faith save him? James chapter 2 verse 14. You believe on Christ and you say, The blood of Christ has cleansed me, renewed me, and justified me. Very well. But suppose you have no good works. Would such faith save you? St. James the Apostle asserts explicitly that faith is unable to save a person who has no good works. But is it St. James only who attacks such dead faith? Nay, but St. Paul the Apostle also says, And though I have all faith, so that I could remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. 1 Corinthians 13.2 If you are truly the Son of God, and a temple for Him, and the Holy Spirit dwells in you, then you ought to have works which are the fruits of the Spirit within you. St. Paul the Apostle describes such fruit, saying, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Galatians 5.22 Do you have these fruits? If not, what is the evidence of the work of the Holy Spirit within you? A tree which bears no fruit is a dead tree, 
and the Lord Jesus Christ, glory be to him, says, Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits you will know them. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Matthew chapter 7 verses 19 through 21. We notice here that the Lord has set a relation between salvation and good fruit, which fruit appears in doing the Father's will. Due to the importance of these fruits, the Lord rebuked the Jews, saying, Therefore I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken from you and given to a nation bearing the fruits of it. Matthew chapter 21 verse 43. The Lord has also explained to us how he intended to cut down the fig tree, which gave no fruit, and how the keeper of the vineyard implored him, Sir, let it alone this year also, until I dig around it and fertilize it. If it bears fruit, well, but if not, after that you can cut it down. Luke chapter 13 verses 6 through 9. Brother, if you do fear to be cut down like that tree, make haste now and do works meet for the sons of God. Do not look slightly upon the value of works, for the axe is laid to the root of the tree. Moreover, works are not only fruits of faith, but they are also. Works are evidence of the existence of faith. St. James the Apostle says, Show me your faith without your works, and I will show you my faith by my works. James 2, 18 this shows that works are evidence of the existence of faith. This is evident from the words of the Holy Bible. You will know them by their fruits. Every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. Matthew chapter 7 verses 16 through 17. Works are evidence of being born of God. The Holy Bible says, If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone who practices righteousness is born of him. 1 John chapter 2, verse 29, and also, whoever has been born of God does not sin. 1 John chapter 3, verse 9. This is what distinguishes God's children, for it is said directly after that, In this the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest. 1 John chapter 3, verse 10. And this goes along with what the Lord said to the Jews who boasted vainly of their being Abraham's children. He addressed them, saying, If you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. John chapter 8, verse 39. He considered works as evidence of sonship. St. Paul the Apostle also asserts this point, saying, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. Romans chapter 8, verse 14. If God's children then are those righteous people, what would we call the sinners? The Bible calls them, Brood of vipers, Matthew chapter 3 verse 7, children of the devil, John chapter 8 verse 44, 1 John chapter 3 verse 10, the sons of disobedience, children of wrath, Ephesians chapter 2 verses 2 and 3. So if anyone says to you, I am God's son because I have been renewed, justified, and sanctified, say to him, by their fruits you will know them. We said, that works are fruits of faith, are evidence of the existence of faith, and are evidence of being born of God. What else? By works faith is made perfect. And this is what St. James the Apostle says, By works faith was made perfect. James chapter 2 verse 22. St. James the Apostle, when speaking about religion, goes far as to say, Pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their trouble, and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. James chapter 1 verse 27. Certainly, such things are all works. However, we do not use one verse only for our benefit, as some others do, because we believe in the principle which says, Using one verse only is dangerous. Since works are of such importance, let us then remember always the words of St. James the Apostle. Therefore, to him who knows to do good and does not do it, to him it is sin. James chapter 4 verse 17.
The Importance of Behavior and Good Works Some may inquire, what relation is there between salvation and one's behavior? It is a matter of faith, not a matter of behavior or good works. So, we shall indicate here the importance of behavior and of keeping the commandments. St. John the Apostle says, If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanses us from all sin. 1 John chapter 1, verse 6 through 7. Thus, walking in the light has two results, fellowship and cleansing. Walking in the light gives us fellowship with God and fellowship with each other, while walking in darkness hinders our fellowship with God. Walking in the light makes us worthy of being cleansed with the blood of Christ, as the Apostle says, The blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanses us from all sin. It depends on our walking in the light. So, it is evident that the deserts of redemption and the cleansing with the blood of Christ requires our walking in the light. How significant then and how serious our behavior is. Such good behavior saves us from condemnation on the day of judgment. As the Holy Bible states, There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh but according to the Spirit. Romans chapter 8 verse 1. It means that you can be saved from condemnation through the Lord Jesus Christ, provided that you walk according to the Spirit, in other words, to behave in a spiritual way. We notice here that the words of St. Paul the Apostle comprise both positive and passive aspects. On one side, a believer should abstain from doing evil, and not walk according to the flesh, while on the other side, he should bear fruit in virtue and walk according to the Spirit. And therefore, many are the commandments of our fathers, the apostles, regarding the importance of behavior. St. Paul the Apostle says in his epistle to the Galatians, If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Galatians chapter 5, verse 25. He stresses the same point again, saying, Walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. He orders us to walk in newness of life. He sends to the Ephesians, saying, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to have a walk worthy of the calling with which you were called. Ephesians 4.1 And also, see then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Ephesians 5.15 See also 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 12, chapter 4 verse 1, Colossians chapter 1 verse 10, and Romans chapter 13 verse 13. Hence, our fathers the apostles prevented mixing up with those who walk disorderly. For St. Paul the apostle says in his second epistle to the Thessalonians, But we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you withdraw from every brother who walks disorderly, and not according to the tradition which he received from us. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 6 and 11 Our fathers the apostles see also that good behavior is a sign of love and a proof of abiding in Christ. St. John the Apostle says, This is love, that we walk according to his commandments. 2 John chapter 6 And also, he who says he abides in him ought himself also to walk, just as he walked. 1 John chapter 2, verse 6 Keeping the commandments is an evidence of having love for Christ and being related to him. In this regard, St. John the Apostle says, For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. 1 John chapter 5, verse 3 this is said also by the Lord himself, for he says, He who has my commandment and keeps them, it is he who loves me. John chapter 14 verse 21. As for being related to Christ, he says, For whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. Matthew chapter 12 verse 50. If one's behavior is of so great significance to the extent 
that on it depends our fellowship with God and with church and our being cleansed of our sins through the blood of Christ. Also according to it, we are to be judged, besides its being an evidence of our love for God, our abiding in Him and our relation to Him. Would then anyone ignore it and say that our life is not just behavior, but is faith? 